Hello, Charles Angels, and welcome to another tutorial. And today we're going to be working on this Typing Beacon game or application. If you if you grew up playing with Mavis Beacon, Mavis Beacon is like a typing software. I'm sure you'll be familiar with what we're working on today. So for this application, you can choose the difficulty level, whether it is easy, medium, hard. Um, then you can click the start button and decide to play. So let's just look at what it is about before we proceed. And so let's say for the easy, say start and go, go, iron, Microsoft, first scene, creator. Oh, yep. 100%. So if, you, if you've if you noticed, you can see that there is this bar at the top that lets us know how far you have gone. And then, you know, we it has calculated how much I typed correctly. So if I no longer want, if I want to try another um, round, I could just reset, move to medium. Let's try hard. Um, I, I have a feeling I'm going to mess up a lot of things, but hard is really hard. I'm supposed to type all those words in six seconds, but let's see. Um, Google, Iron, Microsoft. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, yeah, so I typed 59 correctly. So yeah, this is what we're going to be working on. Um, I feel like it's it's a, it's a fun game and a fun project. And if you are new to programming, this would help also. Yeah, so let's jump into it. All right, so let's start with the HTML before we move to CSS. And then, of course, before we move to JavaScript. So we're going to start with the, we're going to start with HTML. And I'm going to start with creating a main tag. So I'm going to say main. And this main tag is going to have an ID. We're going to give this i we're going to say this id should be called main app right then inside this we're going to have a div and this div is the bar that moves at the top of the game so we're going to just say this is this we're also going to give this an id and we're going to give call this id name this id time bar then I'm going to have a section and this section is going to have an ID, sorry, an ID, we're going to call this level section, level section. And inside this section, we're going to have a H1. Um, we're going to say, call this typing beacon. Then under this, we're going to have a label. And we're going to have the text choose difficulty. I want this to be capital D. Then we're going to have select. And this select is going to have an ID called level picker. All right. Now we're going to have three options. The first option is going to have the text easy. And let me uh, give it a value. And we're going to, the value is going to be 30, right? So let's duplicate this twice. This is going to be medium. And the value is going to be 20. So this is going to represent the how fast the game is going to be. So 30 seconds, 20 seconds, six seconds. So this is going to be hard. Capital H. Right. So we're going to have two buttons. One button is going to be for starting. One button is going to be for resetting the game. So button, say start. Not capital S. Start. Then we're going to give it an ID. We're going to say start. ETN. Let me duplicate this. And then I'm going to say this should be reset. 
I will change the start to reset. So now that the section, we're going to have another section. And this is going to have an ID with, I'm going to call this ID word section. Then we're going to have a H1. And this H1 is going to have an ID that we're going to name word display. And in this ID, we're going to have span, like a couple of span or spans, or I'm just going to say hello. So, L. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. All right. The next. We're going to have another section. And this section is going to have the ID. We're going to name score section. And this section is just going to display when the game is over yes so h1 game over and we're going to have a h2 then and it's going to have the text you typed 80 percent correctly and i'm going to have a span here Oops. Okay, so inside the span is where we're going to have the 80%. And this span is going to have an ID that we're going to name score display. Right. So this pretty much covers the HTML. And if we refresh this, this is what we're going to have on the screen. Um, so yeah. With this, let's jump into CSS and we take it from there. I'm going to create a CSS file. Let's call it styles.css. All right, um, let me link it. href. Style shit. Let me try out if it's working. So we're just going to say background color. Bar. Let's see. Okay, so it's linked. All right. Um, so first, let me remove the margin, padding, usual shenanigans. All right. Box sizing. What a box. We're going to style the main. I mean, we're going to put the background color, the RGB 81, 81, 81. That should give us a darker gray. We're going to have a color that's going to be FFF, which is white, then height. I want it to be 100 view height, then display, flex, flex direction, column, then align items, center. So let's see what that looks like so far. All right. So yeah, everything is in the center. So next we're going to have our styling the time bar. So the height is going to be 15 pixels. Then the width is a hundred percent. Background color, the RGB 255, zero, 
and five. Then we have transform. So the reason why we're transforming it is so that it can move from left to right. So we're going to be changing the scale. So scale is going to be zero, one. In the beginning, it's not okay. Let me make it one one first so that I will then we'll change it. Then we'll change it later. So transform origin. I want the transform origin to be left because like I said, we want it to move from left to right. So if we take a look at that, it's there. But if I change it to zero in the beginning, it shouldn't be there. Good. All right. Next, we're going to um, put a, uh, imagine a class exists. So we're going to say begin. Then we're going to put this time bar. Just a moment, I will explain what's happening. So if you remember the um, when I was showing you the preview, it was animating from left to right, so it was gradually moving. So what I want to do is whenever I add this class at the top here, whenever I add it at this to this main, then I want a particular animation to be applied to this time bar. That's what I'm trying to do. So whenever this is present, then the animation should start running. All right. So animation, the name of the animation, we're going to call it move, right? Let's make that a capital R. Then Let's see 30 seconds, then linear, then animation field mode. I want it to be forward. All right. So this, what this is doing is that when it gets to the end, it doesn't start again. It just stays at the very end. That's what that is doing. Now, instead of 30 seconds, I want this to be a variable. The reason is because whenever, um, when we get to JavaScript, we want this, the ver we want to change that variable so that if it is um, 30 seconds, this runs for 30 seconds. If it is 20 seconds, this runs for 20 seconds. And the major reason why we're using a variable is because um, in order to really manipulate the animation, animation really just has a, a two like states it is either it is paused or it's running we can't stop or start it which is one of the reasons why this is there so whenever this class is in there we have kind of we kind we are simulating a stop yeah aha uh -huh. so yeah so it's a bit tricky and this is the trick we're applying so that we can reset the animation Right, so at the top, I'm just going to um, say root. Then I'm going to create a variable called time, and I'm just going to say 30 seconds. Then here, I'm going to replace this with bar and time. All right. So now let's create the keyframes for the animation. So add keyframes. This is going to be move right, right. Then we're going to say from. So I'm just going to copy this. To. I'm just going to paste it again, but this time it's going to be one. All right. So if we refresh, it should. Oh, there's no begin. So let's let me just do class begin. Yeah. All right. So let me remove this. Okay. Then next, we want to style the level section.
So I'm just going to give it a background color for now. I'm going to remove it later. Of course, we're going to give it aqua. Then the height is going to be 30 VH. Then we're going to give it a width of 100%. Display flex. Flex direction, colon, colon, justify content center, and then align item center. Okay. Now we are going to, okay, let's just see what it looks like so far. Okay, yeah, so this, yeah, so this has brought it to, you know, the center. So now I no longer need this. Um, now let's style the H1, that is this H1 here. I'm just going to copy this. The H1, which is the direct child, I'm going to say margin 20 pixels, top, bottom, left, right, zero. Then the font size should be 45 pixels. Then level section, I want to style the label this time. And I'm going to say font size 18 pixels. And then margin bottom 10 pixels. Okay. Then let's style the level picker. So this, I'm just copy this. Mm, that's it. Okay, so this is going to have a height of 20 pixels and then a width of 150 pixels. All right, then we're going to start the start button and reset button. All right. Um, just paste that again. Change this to reset. Okay. So margin top, 20 pixels. Padding, 5 pixel, 25 pixel. So that's 5 pixels top, bottom, 25 pixels left, right. Then whenever the that this begin class, whenever the begin class is there, um, then... I don't want the start button to show. So start button. So I'm going to say display none. So it's going to disappear when the begin button is there. Then for the reset button, let me just copy this. So in the beginning, the reset button is going to be, it's not going to show. So let's say display none. Then when begin is there, then the reset button will be blocked. <clears throat> so from there, we're going to, let's, okay, so let's see. So now you can see it's just the start button that is there. The reset button isn't there. So let's move to the remaining part. Uh, we're going to say, let's start the word section. Right. So, we're going to give, uh, in, let's give it a background color first so that we can see what is going on. So let's, of course, give it aqua. So we're going to say flex one. That it takes up the remaining space. And we say with 100%. Oops. Then we say padding 20 VH and 20 view width. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. So when this becomes, when this is uh, later, we're going to make this invisible, not invisible display none but so it will take the full space okay so we no longer need color so 
we're going to add another class later on so it's going to be called game over so it is also going to be added here so when this class is there then we want this word section to disappear so essentially we want this text to vanish All right. And then for the H1, so that's this H1. Yeah. Say text align center and then font size 55 pixel. So now, whenever begin, whenever we start the game and this class begin is there, we don't want the um, that we want this to what's the okay? So we want it to spread across. Yeah. So for that to take place, so because right now everything is like. You know, this is so. If I let me see so that I could show you what it looks like right now. So now everything is at the center, and that's not what we want. So when the game begins, we want it to, you know, change from that. So begin, and then we say font size, let's just say 40 pixels, then display flex. Justify content, space between, and align items, center. So uh, right now, it doesn't look like anything has changed, but if we add the class begin, this is what it looks like. All right. So, Okay, now let's move to the score section. Okay, so flex one, then we say width 100%, padding, 20 VH, top bottom, then VW, flex direction, colon, colon, align item center, and then display. In the beginning, we don't want it to show. Right? I'm sure we already get the drift. Then so we want to style everything inside, like everything like this, right? So what I'm just going to do is the child selector all, and I'm going to say margin bottom 20 pixel, then font size 30 pixel. Okay, so when game is over also, then that's when I want to show it because remember it's displaying on. So game over. Then this. I'll say display flex. All right. So now it's not showing. But when I put game over at the top, Class and copy the game over. That's what happens. So, yeah, with that, we've come to the end of the CSS arm of this video. Let's jump into JavaScript. Okay. Jumping straight to JavaScript, let me create a 
JavaScript file. So this is going to be main the JS um, console log yum. Yeah, it's also. <laughs> All right, so script source index.js. Come here, refresh. Okay. Right, so that works. Um, get back here. Let me remove it. So the first thing. I want to work, <clears throat> excuse me. So the first thing I want to work on is what happens when we type. So that's the first thing I want us to work on. So in order to work on that, we're just gonna say const word display because we need some words that we're going to display. So, uh, so we're gonna create those words and display it. The document dot get element by ID and so what display is what display what display what display yeah then I'm going to bring in main app so main app is equal to document get element by ID main All right. Okay. So let me create variable. I'm just going to say, let's say const, not let. So all words, because they are not going to change. So let's start with Google. And we'll say lion. I think this should do. Right. Then what we could do now is um pick the present word so let the present present word we want to display so word is equal to all words then we we'll see zero right so that which means we're just going to pick google yeah all right then to display all the words we are just going to loop we're going to hmm so we're just basically just going to loop through this, essentially. We're going to loop through it and then we'll display it on the screen. So we're just going to create a function for that. Say function is display present, no, capital P, present word. And we'll say word display dot in a HTML is equal to um, empty. So first of all, we want to clear what is inside. Whatever te text is inside, that's what we're going to clear it first. Um, so like now we'll remove this hello and replace it, something like that. And then we'll loop through. So we'll say for let i equal to zero, while i is less than present word dot length i plus plus so we're going to create a template um I, yeah so we're going to click create a template normally we'll do this with you know document dot create element whatnot but just something easier to work with so we'll just create a template i will say we'll put this in back ticks so say span then we'll, let's just imagine we're typing. So we we'll say span. After that, um, the word we want to display inside. So that's going to be present word. Remember, um, strings are like arrays. So if you say present word into bracket I, so remember I will start with zero. So that's going to be G. Okay, so yeah. Then it's move G O O G L E. Yes. So that's how it's going to move. Then we'll say word display dot inner HTML 
plus equal to 10 to it. So, um, so let me call this save. But before we move on, let's remove this game over so that yeah. So now we have Google there. If we change it to let's see, let's make this one. I'm expecting to see lion. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to compare like whatever we type, we're going to compare it to what what is what is being displayed. So yeah. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So in order to achieve that, let's create a event a, an event listener to the window we're going to use it for now we're going to remove it later on but for now let's just put that so we can see window dot add event listener we're going to say on key down uh, we're going to create a fuck we're just going to say for the function that we're going to call is compare letter type compare letter type all right so Okay, so let's create that function. So we're going to say function compare letter typed e. Um, so we're going to say if e dot key. Sorry, oops. Dot dot key is equal to present word dot char at then the letter track letter tracker letter tracker this is going to be a variable we haven't created a variable yet so but let's just let's put zero first so that you understand what i'm saying so we'll put zero at first before we create that variable then we're going to say const mm, let's say the element then we're going to say word display dot children. So now let me explain what, okay, let me just type it out. Then I'll explain what display dot children dot item. Then you say letter tracker. Oh, let's say zero since it's zero we're using initially. So let me explain what's going, what I'm, this means. So word display, so there is a, um, so, what display has children so this has so right now it is lion yeah so what display has this so what we're trying to do is that we're trying to, when we this two matches when both of them are the same for example if we type l or capital l and both of them are the same then we then we would highlight whatever is being typed at the moment so right now which is the first letter which is capital l okay so what we want to do is we want this element the element dot style because what we did here is we picked the first child this picked the first child so this is so let's in this way in this example this is picking h and here now it's picking l yeah so so it's picking the first child. So we want that first child dot style dot color. Oops. The color to be equal to hash four six e b three four. That's what we want. Okay. So if we refresh, and I we type l doesn't match but now if we if we use shift l which is capital letter l then it matches so it becomes it's correct so let's even let's now imagine let's do let's do this let's say i if i said i let's make this one <laughs> so i want it to be i so if i refresh and i type i see i becomes green all right 
But obviously, we don't want to hard code this one and zero. We want to put a variable, which is what I was trying to type before. So let's create that variable. We're going to call that variable letter tracker. So we're going to say let letter tracker equal to zero. So here is going to be letter tracker, and this is going to be letter tracker. <sighs> All right. So if we we can now see letter tracker plus plus here. So what this means is that each time we type, it would move. So let's see what happens. So now if I type L correctly, uh, okay, no, 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 that's not gonna work. Okay, so let's, let me refactor. So let's say else, let's make it red if we type the wrong thing. Okay. Hmm. You know what, let's make this L a small letter so that we can achieve what we want to do straightforward. So let's type L, that's green, I, O, N, right? Okay, so why did I do this? I did this because initially, when it was capital L, if we want to do capital L, we would have to type shift then capital L. And that is, you know, it's going to, disturb us from what we're doing it's not going to work properly so we that's so that's what i was trying to avoid all right so now we're going to see so if it's wrong if what we type is wrong let me change this back to small if what we type is wrong i will say const the element so that's essentially the same thing Okay, wait, let me, okay, in, in fact, so I don't even need to do that. I'll just bring it up. And here, if it's wrong, it should just be the element of style color. A color equal to red, if it's wrong. So let's try that. So I'm going to type L correctly, I correctly. I'm going to type V, so that's wrong, but then N correctly. So that kind of works. That works. That works. That works. That works. That works. That works. Okay. So now we have like an issue that is going on. So what's the issue? Like I said before, if we type this, so now if we're trying to achieve this if we refresh and we try to type capital L, it's going to show red and that's not what we want. So in order to prevent this, let's create another function that will first access what we are typing, whether it is the enter, um, whether it's the enter key or if it's the shift key before we start comparing the letters. So we're gonna call this initiate typing move. move. We're gonna say function initiate typing move. move. And we say e. So if e dot key is equal to shift, we will simply return. We wouldn't do anything, right? And if e dot key, uh, okay, fun. Yeah, let's then we'll, instead of doing another if, we'll just say compare letter typed then. Yeah, so now if we refresh and we type our shift, no, that's still, oh, sorry. Instead of, let me change this to, instead of compared letter type, it's going to be initiate typing mode. Sorry, my bad. Save, refresh. So if we say shift, now nothing happens. L works, works like a charm. So that's, you know, that, that's working already. Now, so now what we want to achieve, okay. So what I, let me bring this back to zero. Okay, so let's refresh. Let's try for Google. 
Right, correct, it works. So what we want to do now is when we hit the end, when we're done typing, when we hit the enter button, then it should, you know, move to the next word. In order to achieve that, we're going to create a new function and the function is, we're just going to simply call the function move to next word. Sounds very descriptive, right? <laughs> so function is going to be move to next word. All right. So to move to the next word, um, The first thing we want to do is we want to reset, you know, by the time we're done getting to the end, when we move to the next word, we want to start again from the beginning. So what, because right now, when we say letter tracker, letter tracker will move from zero to one to two to three to four, you know. So what we want to do is we want to reset it to zero. So we're going to say letter, no, not let, okay, yeah, letter tracker is equal to zero. So that's, so we'll just say reset to the first letter to be typed. All right. Okay. And so we're going to create another variable. The variable is going to be word. It's going to be like a word tracker so that is uh, so that it's we're not just manually putting you know zero one two so it's going to be what we call that word tracker word tracker All right so what we want to do is we're going to see this word tracker plus plus so we're moving to the next one the next thing we want to do is we say present word is equal to all words word tracker. So then we would display the word again. We'll call this. So let's see how that works. So straight up, I'm just going to type enter. Okay, no, 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 no. We haven't called it yet. So to call that inside our initiate typing move, because you know, every single time we type, um the window is listening so we're just going to say if um, e dot key is equal to enter then we're just going to say move to next word right then else we'll now call this we'll now compare the letters okay yeah so let's refresh and see. So immediately I hit enter, I expect it to move from Google to Lion, right? So now it moves to the next word. Mm -hmm. So it moves to the next word. So let's try it again. So we do G O O G L E, enter, moves to the next word. If we start typing L, yes, I O N, right? So, yeah. So that works. That works, that works, that works. Next, what we're going to do is when we when we, are, we have run out of words, when we are done with all the words in the array and we hit enter, then we want the game to end. Because right now, if we hit enter, then we're going to run into an error. And that's not what we want. We want when we are done with all the words and we hit enter, then that's the that's the end. That's game over, right? Okay. So um, so with that, we're going to create a new function. We're going to call this function terminate game. So what we want to do for now is just say main. No, 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 main app. Okay, oh, this should be capital A. Okay, so main app dot class list dot add game over game 
then we want to remove the event listener. So there's a window that to remove event listener key down. Then we'll call it so that's initial typing. Yeah, I'll only remove that. Then we save. So let's refresh. So now let's just hit enter, 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 and see what happens. Enter. Okay, something seems to have broken. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, my bad. We haven't linked this yet. Okay, so what we have to do is under move to next word, uh, we're going to say if word tracker is equal to all words dot length minus one. So if this is, let's say for example, this is um, two. So yeah. And this is, so we'll say, of course, if the length of word is, uh, if this, for example, now this we have, so if we say all words dot length, we're going to, we're going to see two, right? So two minus one is going to be one. So when this is one, uh -huh, so I forget my dress. So if this is one and two minus one is one, obviously, then we'll terminate the game and then we return. So let's refresh again, enter, enter, game over. You typed 80% correctly. Yay. That's what we're aiming for. But obviously now we can see that um, it's not calculating our score yet, at least not for now. It's not calculating our um, score yet. So before we get to calculating our score, let's head back to how we're going to start the game. So before anything starts, we don't want this to be here. We don't want Google to be there. We want it to be, please start typing, you know, uh -huh, something like that, or click the start button to start typing. And then we will hit the start button. So that's what we're going to work on um, next so that, you know, we have like a proper game to begin with, something like that. So to do that, we are going to bring in the start button into the JavaScript side. Uh, so that's going to be, hmm, that's going to const start btn is equal to document dot get element by id. I'm going to say start btn, all right. So we're going to add an event listener to to the to the start button. Mm -hmm. sure that okay, let me just put that here. Okay, so we're going to say start btn dot add event listener. We can say click, and then we'll say start game. Okay. So let's create that function. Take the function start game. So um, first, before we proceed, let's remove this event list now. We no longer need it. Yeah. And we do not need this too. So to start the game, the first thing we want to do when we want, when we want to start the game is we would add that event listener here. So we'll say window dot add event listener. Then we'll say key down and initiate typing move. I should have just cut and paste. <laughs> All right. So now we are adding the event listener when we hit the start button. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to display the word, the present word, right? So let's see how that works. So if we refresh, it's saying hello. So in the beginning, we don't want it to be hello. 
we want it to be let's remove this let's just say um please um click the start button okay yeah so now when we hit the start button it changes to google yay all right So at this point, what we want to start doing is we want to work on the bar that shows at the top, the bar that shows at the top when we start the game. So, and at the same time, we would also expand this so that it's bigger and it goes wide like it's supposed to be. Okay, so how do we do that? um the first thing we want to do is we want to manipulate this variable this variable right here we want to manipulate it and we'll do that by saying document dot document element dot style dot set property and what do we want to change is time and then we want to give it how fast do we want this to be. So whether, you know, yeah. So for now, we're just going to create, we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it um, level timer. So let level, level timer. So in the beginning, let's say, let's give it 30. 30 looks cool. Mm, let, then let's say 20. So here we're going to use back ticks. I will say level timer and put an S at the back, right? So the reason why we're doing this is because we have no way of pausing and starting the animation. But yeah, there's no way of stopping, not pausing, of stopping, then restarting the animation. So we're trying to, this is like a trick to make that happen. Yeah. And so that each time we want it to restart, then we can give it, let's say, for example, we assign from easy to medium to hard. We can use this to assign how fast that bar at the top is going to move. Okay, so next, um, we're going to say main app dot class list dot add. Let me say begin. Okay, so so this would remove this removes the start button and styles the word okay so refresh so if we say start you can see yeah it starts moving so let's let's make it fast very fast so that just to show that it will move according let's say five seconds so see let's refresh and start see in five seconds and it's done but what we want now is if the timer ends like if we keep moving and it ends then it should hit game over mm -hmm. yeah that's what we want oh before we do that before we do that okay let's let's do that first let's do that first and then next we will work on what happens when we hit um when we get to the end uh -huh, something yeah that kind of thing when we get to the end and 
when we think, what, what, what I mean is when we, when we are typing and gets, when we are done typing all the words. Uh, so when it came over, what should happen to the battery? All right. That's, so first of all, what we want to work on is what should happen when the bar is full. Yeah. Okay. So what we what we're going to do is we're going to use a timeout for this. We are going to use a timeout for this. And we're going to say set timeout is so we're just going to do this. And we're going to say terminate game. No, no, let's just put the seconds first. So that's going to be 1000 times the level timer. And then I'm going to say terminate game. I'm going to terminate the game. But what we also want to do is we want to assign this to a variable so that we can clear this when the game is terminated. So we're going to say timer. Okay, so let's go to the top and create a variable called timer ID. So let timer ID. There's nothing in the beginning, so it's just undefined. So, um, so this is going to be timer ID is equal to this. Yeah. Then we would terminate the game. So what we also want to do when we terminate the game is we now also want to clear timeout. And we're going to say timer ID. So refresh, let's see. So five seconds and boom. So now let me increase it. This let's, let's say 30 seconds. Let's not make it 30 seconds for easy. All right. So now when we hit the start button and go start typing, say lion. You can see when we're done typing, it just keeps, the bar just keeps moving. And that's not what we want. What we want is that we want it to stop when we are done typing. We want it to just, you know, stop at the top. So the first thing we're going to do is let's um, bring in time bar. So const time bar. And we're just going to say document.getElementById time bar where is it time bar so if we go back down say time bar dot style dot animation dot, no 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 animation play state then we want it to be paused save so refresh, start, a Google, Lion, and pauses. So yay, that works. That absolutely, absolutely works. So now I think the next thing we can do is we can calculate the score. Let's calculate the score. Let's calculate the score. And to do that, we will just create a function. We're going to call the function calculate score. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to get the total number of all the letters. Yeah. And also get the number of how much we have um correctly typed uh-huh so then we would divide it and multiply it by 100 simple mathematical equation so how do we get all the you know, all the letters so we'll say const i'm going to use a reduce i'm going to use re we're going to use reduce so that's um i think you see you're familiar with higher order functions should you know reduce so all words that reduce 
So I'm going to say, say current and total. Then I'm going to say my current plus equal total. And then I want this to start with an empty string. So what's happening? Let me quickly explain this. In the beginning, it's going to be an empty string. Then when the reducer starts, it's a loop. So when it starts, it, the current, let's say for example, because we're using all words. So it's going to start with Google. Then it's going to move to Lion. So in the beginning, it's going to be Google and then Google, so the empty string plus plus equals total. This is the total you get. So the current is Google. So current plus equals total. That's going to be Google. So now the string is Google. So in the next iteration, it's going to be Google. No, no, current is going to be lion. So it's going to be lion plus equals Google like that. So let's just console log what it's going to show us so that you better understand what I'm saying. So all letters is, uh, let's put calculate score. Let's just put calculate score here. And if I refresh, if we come and inspect, so you can see now we have Lion Google squashed together. Yeah. If you want a, and if you want more explanation or reduce, just let me know in the comment section. Maybe I would make a video for that. Who knows? All right. So from that, we say const the score is going to be. So let before. Okay. So we're just going to say the const is going to be correct count. We haven't created this variable yet, so we're going to create this variable right now. Current count divided by all letters dot length multiplied by 100. All right, so let's create this correct count. So I'm just going to copy this. So at the top, I'm going to say let correct count equal to zero. Okay. So um, then we're going to math.floor it. So let's just say Lord score, Lord score is equal to math. No, capital M. Math dot floor, the score, right? So yeah, that's how we calculate the score. But obviously, after calculating the score, we need to show the score somewhere. We need to display it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring the score display. Right, so um, at the top, we're going to say const score display is equal to document get element by nah. get element by id this. All right, so we'll come back here and we'll say score display dot inner text equal to so we're going to use back ticks and then we're going to say floor score then we'll put out just outside the bracket or curly braces we're going to put the percentage right all right so we want to calculate the score when we terminate the game that's what what we want to do when we terminate the game that's when we're going to calculate the score so we'll just say okay so let's hmm. Let, yeah so we'll first calculate the score so that's going to be here calculate the score game over then yeah so let's let's see okay so all right so right now, obviously, it's going to be 0% because we aren't calculating the correct scores. Uh, the correct, the, no, no, no. We aren't calculating the correct letters we're typing. Yeah. So what do we have to do? Well, there's a go, hmm, while, where do we type? 
Okay, come here. So here we're going to say correct count. So whenever we type the right thing, we say plus plus. Yeah. And that should give us, you know, pretty much what we're looking for. I don't need this any longer. Refresh, start, we'll go by and we typed 100% correctly. Yay. So let's imagine I just keep hitting the and see we typed zero percent correctly. So it means our you know our calculation is correct. Yeah. So now what we want to do is choose the level. So now so it moves from easy to medium to hard. And we are going to just create a function for that. And the function we're going to say function. We're going to call this function choose level. No, no. Capital L, yes, choose level and E. <clears throat> so we're also going to bring in this. What's this? Yeah, this. So this level picker. So at the top. const level picker document get element by id level picker yeah so back here we are gonna say level timer is equal to so remember they have values 30 26 so we're going to just say um e dot current target that value however we want it to be number so what we're going to do is we'll just wrap it with number you could use past as int if you want but i love using number instead so, yeah and that that should do that so let's try it out so refresh very easy and so the default is easy so that's 30 right yeah so let's change it okay so yeah um click start so it's slow go go yeah so let's refresh and change it to hard and start it's still slow so something isn't working Oh, we haven't added the event listener to it. My bad. To the level picker. So that's level picker. The add event listener. <laughs> this is going to be change. And then um, choose level. Save. Refresh. So <laughs> add stats game. Yeah. And yeah. So that is working. Okay, okay, we typed 70% correctly. All right, so last but not the least, we when the game is over, when it has terminated, we want to restart the game. Yeah, so let's create a function for that that would kind of reset everything. So at the base, we're just going to say function, it's going to be reset, restart. game and then we say present word is going to be equal to all words zero obviously so that's the first then we say letter tracker is equal to zero word tracker equal to zero um, the correct count equal to zero, timer ID, we'll just say equal to null, then words display dot inner text, or no, let's say inner HTML. Mm. 
Mm, let's say inner text. Let's say inner text first. And let's just say press start to begin. All right. Main app dot class list. So we want to, what we want to do is we want to remove the begin. Remember when we started the game, we put this begin. We want to remove that to to a class list. So remove in then oops we also want to remove game over all right and then we want the time bar remember we paused the time bar and so we want it to move to the style that animation play state equal to running save so obviously this wouldn't work immediately we need to call it and we're going to use the restart button to call it so yeah yeah restart reset okay so that's going to be const reset btn is equal to document dot get element by id this reset button so we're gonna say reset btn the add event list now click and then we're going to say restart game yeah so if we refresh and let's be hard again so we'll just say star google lion so now if we hit the reset button everything should go back like this should go back to the beginning um because immediately we remove the this begin sorry if we immediately we remove this begin it's going to re this is, is going to be removed to which kind of resets the animation so we're going to say reset and everything start so if we change it to easy let's click start it's slow and lion and yeah so that brings us to the end of this game i know it's it's longer than i thought it would be but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new thank you so much if you enjoyed this so far please do like drop a comment and subscribe and see you in the next one